The designs of his heart are from age to age to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is the first Friday of the month, and so a day we traditionally dedicate to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So we celebrate a votive Mass of the Sacred Heart. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the Sacred Mystery. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the heart of your Son, wounded by our sins, <clears throat> Bestow on us in mercy the boundless treasures of your love. Grant, we pray, that in paying him the homage of our devotion, we may also offer worthy reparation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is, of course, required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts, and then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. Criminals are destroyed, and the posterity of the wicked is cut off. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in times of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. <clears throat> alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. No one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
When we last left our hero yesterday at the beginning of Luke, we heard the call of Peter, Andrew, James, and John. We've skipped a bit in the Gospel of Luke now. He has since called Matthew the tax collector. Very well-to-do man. He had the license to collect taxes in the name of the Roman government. And in thanksgiving for this call, he throws a banquet. And Jesus and his apostles, those four, are already there. And he's get asked a question. People are watching these apostles. People are watching Jesus. His healing has already been sort of well-known and out, and now their eyes are on them. And so people come and ask a question. Why do the disciples of John the Baptist do this and the disciples of the Pharisees? Isn't that part of your thing? Isn't that fasting? We should never underestimate the value that we have, the, the task that we have to evangelize. Now, evangelization is in our words, in talking to others about the Lord. It might even be in writing. There are many people who, you know, have a blog or write on social media. And then there's also the deeds that we do, that idea of being watched. We, uh, yes, uh, a few weeks ago, before um, the night before the uh, priesthood ordination, or diaconate ordination, uh, a bunch of us uh, were at an uh, evening prayer and, uh, at the cathedral, and afterwards decided we would all go gather together at a restaurant. There were about 12 priests, maybe more, 15. Um, and, and as we went in and walked through to where they had a table, there was a big tent and we were outside, you could see the eyes of everybody looking. Oh my God, they're all in black. You know, they're all, all of us are dressed as priests. And I said, you know, like, realize we're all being watched. We're going to be watched by this. Somehow, like, we drink differently or we eat differently or something like that. But there's something about it. Priests are just kind of used to it. It's why priests rarely dance at weddings, right? Because if you get invited to a wedding reception and you dance, the videographer finds you. We'll stop what they're doing. We'll stop food halfway. We'll, we'll, we'll stop chewing because the priest is going to dance. I have to get that on video. Phones come out and things, you know. As if we do it. So there is an aspect that we do things that, that, as Catholics, we do things sometimes that are in the public eye. Or we shouldn't shy from it. Praying together at a diner right before a meal. Or, or um, you know, praying the rosary in public. Or, you know, you're sitting waiting for something. Or we're in public, you know, on a plane or something like that. Taking out a, a book sometimes starts some of the most interesting conversations if I bring a book with me someplace on a plane. I know most people now have a, you know, they read it on their phones or iPads or something like that. But there is that aspect that we should go. This is a legitimate question. This isn't with cynicism. This might be with just genuine curiosity. And the Lord answers back, really, this is the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. So he brings back the idea to them of, of, a, of the wedding feast. And for them, the wedding feast meant absolute joy. It was a time when you were even exempt from the Sabbath devotion of, of, of no unnecessary work. Um, it was a time when the bride and groom were treated like royalty, even if the rest of their lives it would never happen. It was a time when the whole village turned out. It was a community event. And so the idea of fasting during a wedding would have been like, oh no, you never do that. That's, that's not part of the rules. So he's trying to lift them up to this sense of joy. There should be joy now. And he wants them to begin to lay the, he's laying the foundation that, you know, the Messiah is here. That time of salvation that everybody prays for has come in this way. Now, it might mean something new. It might mean um, something different. And then he brings in the parable of the cloth and the wineskin, right, of, of the idea of the old won't match the new. There might be some different things in the new that aren't part of the old. And it's a way of saying not to scare away. You know, devotions now in our, you know, are in our world, in our Catholic world, uh, happen, you know, the prayer books and podcasts, right? Uh, you know, um, uh, apps on phones and things like that, that we never would have dreamed. Your grandmother never would have dreamed that these things were even possible, right? And yet here they are, and they can be good, and they can be helpful, and they foster devotion. So before we're quick to shoot off, you know, to poo-poo something that's old, you know, there might be some, or something that's new, like let's value, let's take a look at it, maybe something new. Similarly, we shouldn't throw something away just because it's old, as we hear in the gospel, right? The old is good. The traditions and the practices even within a family. Uh, Paul, you know, tells us how we should look at each other at times or we should see ourselves. He said we should see ourselves as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. He's taking both ends because the word he uses for servant is the word that meant the guy, the slave who was in the bottom of the galley rowing the boat. You know, those pictures of 
think of like, what was it, Ben-Hur, you know, like when they're in the bottom of the, uh, or is it Spartacus, one of those movies where they're in the bottom of the, of the Roman galley and all, their whole job is just to row when they're told to row. He's using that. That's the lowest of the slaves. Just do what you're told. And then the steward, right? The steward was the chief of staff. The steward was still a slave, but he ran the whole house. Here's a guy who told, here's a guy, the slave did what he was told. The steward tells the slave, the other guy, what to do. And he's like, whatever it is, whatever it may be on either end, always it's service to God, whatever we're called to. At times we may be humiliated by what we're asked to do. At times we may not be happy. But ultimately when we serve the Lord, anything we do is good. And that's why, like St. Paul says at the end, it's not about judging ourselves. Well, this job is lower than my social class, or this is beneath my dignity, right? Ask any priest, <laughs> ask any pastor, you know, what do you, what's, your, what's your job, O priest of God? Well, there's times when I have to clean up, throw up on a, you know, a little child threw up on a pew, or you got to go clean up, so someone made a mess in a bathroom, and you're sitting there mopping, and you're going, oh, this is yours, O priest of God, right? Oh, boy, this is what I went to graduate school for. But it is, whatever God calls us to do, we do. And at times it's demeaning, perhaps, or at times it's, it's humbling work. And other times it might be those moments of glory, those moments of joy. So it's, it's offering ourselves to God, knowing that it's not about us to judge ourselves, knowing it's not about us caring what others think when they judge us. Ultimately, it's what God says, how he looks at us. And if he's the one who gave us the work to do, he's not going to say, oh, that was beneath you. He's going to say, I gave you something to do, sometimes to see if you would do it. And you did. With confidence and trust, we bring our prayers and needs before the Lord. For the church, the servant of Christ, and the steward of God's mysteries, we pray to the Lord. For all who exercise political or judicial power in our nation, and for those seeking to bridge political divides, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, may they know God's healing presence in their lives and be consoled by the support and prayers of others, we pray to the Lord. For all gathered here who seek a deeper relationship with Christ and his church, may the grace of the Holy Spirit transform them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may the angels and saints lead them to the new heavenly Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. For Richard Hudak Sr. and James Tedesco Sr., for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-loving God, hear our prayers and grant them in your generous mercy, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O oh Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation for our offenses through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. He who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. You may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. His kingdom of power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thus says the Lord, let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within the one who believes in me. For those watching by live stream, we offer the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. So again today, the first Friday, devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, to that heart that loves and pumps for us, loves us with an unending, unimaginable love. Today, uh, also a Friday, uh, during the week, we have our Eucharistic adoration, which will take place today following Mass. Uh, and conclude this evening with benediction at 7 p.m. Uh, be aware of that. Also, during the course of the week, uh, you may have heard the governor released, you know, uh, extended the, relie relieved some of the restrictions. So now, uh, at our masses, we're allowed to have 150 people at each mass. So slowly getting better every time. But just people who are aware of that and watching at home uh, know that now, you know, as things are releasing, that uh, you know you are most welcome and prayerfully consider that it's time to come back to church to receive the sacraments. We love doing the streaming. It's wonderful, but it's also um, time to come home. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.